not just on dramatic, but over the past year, COVID-19 has taken over the world. This new virus has impacted people's routines, traditions, and even lives. There is so much to talk about, so many things that we just don't know. These are definitely scary times. With all the information being said in the media, it's hard to know what's real and, and what's fake. With this information in mind, I decided to do my own research and found out how my school, Coastal Carolina University, has been impacted by COVID and what they're doing about it. So without further ado, welcome to Coastal vs. COVID. Hi, my name is Earl Foxworth and I'm a senior communications major and marketing minor at Coastal Carolina University. Founded in 1954, Coastal Carolina University is located in Conway, South Carolina. Coastal has over 10,000 students enrolled and offers over 40 undergraduate programs. Throughout this short documentary, you will see interviews with six members of the Coastal community. These members range from students to teachers to all the way up to the Dean of Students. Before we begin, let's meet the community members. So my name is Sarah Vest Spears and I'm a special education major here at Coastal and I'm in the club CAB. I'm in the club, the Council for Exceptional Children and I'm also a life mentor on campus. My name is Maggie Lopez. I'm a senior exercise and sports science major from Charleston, South Carolina. Um, I currently hold the position as president of Coastal Activities Board and I'm also a part of the exercise and sports science club on campus. So yeah, getting ready to leave, but excited. I'm Darren Flores. I'm a senior marketing major from Lexington, Kentucky. So I am an AIM pioneer, which is African American Initiative Command. Uh, I was a member, now I'm a pioneer. Uh, I was a 2018 orientation leader. I'm a teal trailblazer or a tour guide, as some people call it. Um, I was a student assistant, now I'm a building manager in the Live Jackson Student Union. And then I also have the honor and privilege of being a student body president here at Coastal. Well, hello, my name is Matthew Gilbert, and I'm a lecturer of marketing here at Coastal Carolina University in the Wall College of Business. This is my 13th year of teaching, and uh, prior to teaching, I worked for many years in marketing, either in organizations and industry, and also as a marketing consultant. And prior to coming here to Coastal, I spent six years in Dubai teaching marketing and management courses at the university there. Uh, my name is Dr. Susanna Marshman. I serve as the Assistant Vice President for Student Engagement, which means I oversee all areas of student life, um, which encompasses student activities, student government association, veteran services, the union, fraternity and sorority life, as well as new student and family programs. And then I also oversee university recreation. So everything that has to do with the HTC Center, Williams Bryce, Intramurals, Club Sports, Outdoor Center, all of that good stuff. Hello, my name is Dr. Peter Packett. I am the Dean of Students, and I also currently serve as the Interim Vice President for Student Affairs. So in that role, I oversee all of the units in Student Affairs, including Student Life, Counseling Services, Student Health Services, Live Well Office, University Recreation, uh, all of the offices that sort of support students throughout their experience here at Coastal Carolina. Next up, you see the community members respond to four questions that I asked them just relating to how Coastal has gone about dealing with COVID. Let's take a look at their responses to the questions. I definitely don't go out as much as I used to. And when I do go out, I think about like what I need, what I need to get so I don't have to go out in the future um, as much as I used to. Um, and definitely I just wear my mask and I always carry um, some Clorox wipes, some uh, soap, antibacterial soap, and also hand sanitizer wherever I go. So I know I always have it. So day to day, it's been a really big change because I'm so used to going on campus and participating in events and um, just seeing people because that's what you look forward to when you're involved is being a part of things face to face. So it's been a little bit saddening and very different in terms of jobs and friendships. Yeah. So today it's, it's definitely very different. Okay, so personally for me, it's been like 
crazy just because like there's no guidance to this right um like you can't be like hey how do i do this because yeah. nobody has ever been through this before um and so for me like what's been hard is like i usually have time to get to know professors throughout the semester mm. this semester it hasn't been the case like usually you know it's just like a little kiss up to the professor like, yeah hey, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if i need an a i'm gonna go ahead and give a sweet talk right but this semester i feel like it's been so different because like I'm not gonna be able to do that this semester. Yeah. Like I've, I've been having to work harder than usual because I know that like at the end of the semester, if I need to, if I need to get <laughs> saved grade wise, I can't do it. Right. Yeah. Some professors don't even know my name, believe it or not. Like it's crazy that like you'll get in the Zoom and they'll just be like, yeah, you know, welcome y'all. Yeah. In this for a whole semester, and I don't even know who you are, type of thing. <laughs> um, like it has been a little bit of struggle now, like as being like president just like going back to like how things have never been done before so like sometimes i'll ask like professional staff like what should i do and they'll be like well, what do you think <laughs> but, but that's not the question like that's just like that's the thing though like we've never been through any of that stuff before so like i've had to like come up with a lot of things um to make sure that like students still have that opportunity to voice their opinion and if they don't like something what are ways that we can you know make that come across campus? Well, I think the most immediate impact is just the way that I deliver my courses. So I think had this been a typical year, um, I think all four out of my five courses were um, originally designed to be taught on campus with the fifth as just a traditional asynchronous direct uh, distance learning course. So if it had been, if COVID had never happened, I'd be on campus you know, pretty much on a regular basis uh, with my courses Tuesday, Thursday uh, in physical classrooms. And then just the one additional course would be online, but it's not, it wouldn't be synchronous with Zoom necessarily. Um, so it would just kind of be in its own space. But yeah, so the biggest change is really um, that I'm basically streaming all my classes from home via Zoom. Um, in terms of what my day-to-day -day looks like now, I'm definitely on a lot, in a lot more meetings than I think the previous assistant vice president had um, specifically related to COVID. So, for example, I was on a call this morning about environmental management, and typically that has to do with like off-campus behavior and how we're partnering with off-campus businesses. In that meeting, I would say 75% of it this morning was about COVID um, and parties that happened that in the past would have been a concern like a drinking standpoint and not only on that but also we have 400 people who are not masked they're in close proximity to each other and is this going to become a spread um, cluster event so um, there's a lot more conversations about covid um, up until about three weeks ago i had a weekly meeting specifically about students in isolation and quarantine wow. how we were serving those students I mean, that was a two hour meeting every week, just focused on isolation and quarantine. Yeah, I think the hardest part is that, that particularly over the summer, I think when we were still um, feeling like we were in triage mode, that there, there has been much less boundary. Um, you know, I think it's, it's sort of work would go into the evenings, um, which would happen before, um, but I think this has been sort of a, this can't wait till tomorrow because we've got to get this solved because the next thing's going to come. Um, so I think the boundaries have been much messier. Uh, and then I think, you know, being there for staff as well, um, just earlier today, I had a meeting with two of my direct reports and they're people that I work well with. Um, and I was like, okay, this will be a low stress meeting. Um, but they both had a lot of things that were frustrating them. And that's sort of been my role a lot more now is, you know, helping people, um, who are for us, both of them have young kids. One of them's kids' daycare is closed for two weeks because right. of an outbreak. And so just the unpredictable pieces of having to help support and manage that as well as take care of your own self. Yeah. Um, and so, so that's been challenging. I think, you know, the normal personal outlets as well. I, I normally went to a sort of group fitness gym that did high intensity things and they're still open, but I'm not comfortable going there right. to do those in-person things um, because, you know, they're all breathing the same air without masks on. And I'm like, eh, no, that's yeah. not a risk I'm willing to take. Right. So, so yeah, I think it's finding those new outlets as well. Um, strangely, you mentioned that right prior to our conversation, I had a minute between meetings. I was like, maybe I should buy a bicycle. So I was like, on Amazon, I'm like, I can get a bike. Um, so yeah, no, but I think it's, it's been, it's totally been personally challenging as well. Um, and I think the, the other piece of that also is stepping into the interim vice president role in July, um, 
you know, not having a full grasp of what that role involves right. in normal times um, and having to learn that in, the, in this context has been challenging also. So, right. yeah. yeah, it's definitely kind of had personal impact. Um, now I think the difference is that it does allow for a little more flexibility. Um, last week for the first time since COVID began, I, I took a trip to visit a friend who was moving across the country and to help help her sort of unpack and get her life in order. Um, and I was able to work, you know, yeah. three days a week remotely, which I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise um, and take a couple days off. So, but, you know, I think that that's, um, that hasn't been an opportunity prior to this this semester, mostly just because it's been so hectic and triage, um, but right now it feels like it's kind of getting in a groove. From this first question, the thing I was really grasping from the Coast community is that we are not limiting our how much we go out we're limiting what we do and who we see and even when it comes to family members we're limiting you know how often we're seeing these certain family members at you know at what times and so like dr pack was saying even going to the gym now that things like that were in our personal life routines that we just we just can't do anymore and and feel safe doing them because of the virus and so the general synopsis i got from this this specific question uh from the group was that they are all just limiting you know who they go out with who they see and how often they're spending time outside the house yes so i definitely had a lot of um concerns coming back to this semester because coastal the space is already kind of small for the amount of people we have and it's already expanding as much as it can so i was a bit nervous about how coastal is going to make extra room for social distancing and also how the students are going to react with the pandemic like if the people around me were going to be safe and be wearing their masks and sanitizing and all of that yeah so um i got here a little bit before school started and when everyone did return on campus, you kind of noticed that people weren't necessarily following the protocol. So I automatically worried about the rates because of people not social distancing or people not taking it too seriously. So it was a concern that we're all put in this bubble and you can only do so much to stop the spreading of things. Yeah, uh, people not following directions, bro. Yeah. I think that's still one of the main things that worries me to this day. Mm -hmm. Mostly like, it's, I don't want to say it's the freshmen, but mm -hmm. like for them, this is their first time that they've ever been to like come out of home. Yeah. Home. So like, you know, just thinking back to like when we were freshmen, bro, like think about the stuff that you did. Like, exactly. Yeah. You used to be do being at home. So like, I can't blame them for that. But at the same time, it's like, listen, like in order for us to stay here, you have to follow the rules. Dude. Exactly. Um, but then it also goes up to like the upperclassmen too. Like some of them will host a party. Mm -hmm. you know, friends and their friends will invite their friends and somehow one of them knows a freshman and the freshman bring like 12 of them and it's yeah. just like the ongoing cycle of like trying to like get people to really understand like yeah, yeah. I mean, like, this is serious but I mean for the most part I would say that Coastal has done a really great job like over the summer I was able to like be a part of like some of the procedural things of like how we came up with some of the rules procedures that we have to follow um and, you know we are one of the only schools in the nation that's really open so yeah. I mean, I'll say anything, but like, nah, for sure. Like, just people not listening was my biggest concern when coming back. I think my only concerns were initially being unsure how the university would, uh, or what options the university would give us to teach yeah. us and the students, right? So I wasn't sure what the arrangements would be because I knew different schools and even sometimes, di you know, different schools within the same state. Um, we're handling this differently yeah. and where I had been in Dubai we had gone virtual we were using teams for the most part so we were virtual basically as of like uh, they rearranged our spring break kind of and I think it was somewhere around like the first of April we came back mm -hmm. and then we were all online so okay. and even for us to get to campus we had to get permission to get to camp to go to campus and all this stuff because it was I mean Dubai and UAE overall w w was much more uniform and it's strictness and enforcement right. of different policies so um so coming here yeah i just didn't know what it would be because um i wasn't sure initially and what was nice though what i really appreciate is they gave me the option so monica yeah uh, professor fine said how would how do you want to teach so there are faculty who are like me teaching remotely and mainly for me it's, it's health concerns but i know there are other faculty who are teaching on campus and then some of their students are in class and then some are online. So yeah. 
um, that was my other uncertainty, you know, so for those faculty who are teaching on campus, you kind of have two worlds, right? So you have your physical students, which is obviously a smaller number because of the separating of yeah. everybody. And then you also, you know, kind of have this online audience, which I actually got to be a part of because um, I was able to sit in on two other faculties courses. One uh, was uh, Peter Gaska's oh. business course. And then I, I sat in on a PhD course in education. But Peter, uh, Peter Gaska's course was interesting because he was exactly in that situation I described where he was in a physical classroom. I forgot to ask him how many students were there, but I know in addition to me who was there virtually, there were some other students online as well. So it was, it was, I wasn't sure initially how I might juggle the two, but it was, it was helpful to see how he did it because he did a really good job of kind of balancing the here and there kind of a thing. <laughs> um, I think, you know, none of us have been lived a pandemic before and see what worked well for another institution and then relate it back to ourselves. Um, and a lot of what we do in higher education is based on that. We see what other schools are doing. We manipulate it to work for Coastal and then we implement it here. Um, so there was no nothing for us to research. Um, so I think there was a lot of concerns. I think most of our concerns um, were from the fact, not, not that they weren't our concerns, but where it was going to be classroom behavior and classroom management. Um, but as it turns out, I teach FYE as well, and students aren't coming to class really. I teach a class of 28 students. 16 of those said that they wanted to be in person. And for the last three weeks, only four have shown up in person. I think what we prepared for though was not where the issues were because of that classroom piece. We prepared for a lot of the on-campus pieces mm -hmm. um, and we were not necessarily prepared for all the off-campus concerning behavior that came up. Um, so we kind of had to act in the moment um, to change our policies and change our expectations and mm -hmm. communicate those out so that students were aware. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> I, think, I think we'd be lying to you if we said we were confident the entire summer this was gonna happen. I would say, um, if you'd asked me that question on July 15th, I would have told you there was maybe a 5% chance we'd be doing what we're doing right now. Um, just, you know, if you were following the numbers here locally at that time, they were going up and up and up and there was just no, nothing was, you know, I was like, there's no way we can bring students back in person. Um, and so, so yeah, I think that there was definitely moments of well, what's the right thing to do here. Um, I, I would say it probably wasn't until, you know, maybe the first week in August when I was like, okay, this is, we're going to make this work, right? Yeah. Um, how long is it going to work? I have no idea, but we're going to make it work. Um, and so, yeah, so I think that was the first time I felt confident in terms of we can at least give this a, a whirl and see what happens in person. Um, now, I, you know, it, it's interesting because, you know, I, mean, I was in meetings all summer with colleagues. I don't, I don't know. It'd be interesting to hear from their perspective the same question because we didn't talk about it, right? I think it was just right. all this. We've got a plan like we're doing it because we don't really have a lot of other options here. Um, so yeah, no, it definitely was. It ebbed and flowed, I think, throughout. Uh, and then those first couple weeks when, you know, we saw large schools, uh, UNC, you know, UNC Chapel Hill closed and other schools that, that sort of went online. Um, I think it was a moment of, is this going to work? Uh, our numbers, you know, went up for three weeks in a row there and they got pretty high pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, off and on. I feel like now, um, I, I do feel like we are finally at a place now where we, we have some things in place. We've got, we brought on a whole bunch of temporary staff to help with COVID related things. Um, and so we've got sort of the resources and the staffing that we need to, to, to make this work. Um, there's one piece that we still don't have that's been delayed. We had hoped to have a um, temporary, we're calling it the health center annex, uh, so essentially a fancy like semi-trailer for lack of better okay. words yeah. that would be parked adjacent to student health services to uh, help with with some of the load and that that's just gotten caught up in um, some delays with contracts and legal pieces and state right. pieces um, so our hope is that in January that we have that as well in case there is that additional surge with uh, COVID and flu and all the pieces that we need to take care of but otherwise I do you know and I think that that, that as I reflect on this or I think the you know in that sort of July period, July and early August, we were doing some of this planning, but I think we all thought, oh, this might not actually happen anyway. So, so let's plan, but let's not go too far, you know? Mm -hmm. um, now I say that to you just because that was my personal experience. That was never something that was discussed in a meeting. Course, uh, yeah, the discussions right. were, we're moving forward. We got to make plans to do it. But I don't think it was really until folks got here in August, we were like, okay, this is happening. We got to roll <laughs> What I got from the community from this question was that their biggest concerns when students were coming back 
were that students were not going to follow, you know, the ordinance placed by the CDC and even by, you know, Coastal Administration. And so their fears or their concerns were that because the students might not follow the rules, this could cause an outbreak and cause us to close like some of the other bigger schools did that we saw, you know, during the course of this semester. Um, you know, like the UNC and uh, USC and, you know, all the other schools that closed down either for a little bit or for the whole semester. And so the biggest concerns were just people not following the rules and not following these guidelines that were set to, you know, keep everybody safe. I think just being mindful of who you are around and not going to the parties and the clubs and just thinking about if I do this, will I get exposed and what will that look like if I spread it to others? And mm. just being mindful that this is all personal responsibility and keeping ourselves safe. Yeah, I mean, I think exactly what we were just talking about. If people were given the opportunity or maybe enforced to have testing, we would have more true numbers or not having anything on campus. I know that sounds terrible and that's not yeah. what I meant, want, but people are still making contact, just going to get food or anything of that such. So making us still come back here may not have been the best thing to do for the student. I think we need to have more tests on campus. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have like a distinct place where we can have frequent tests for students. Right yeah. now we have like the things that are in Lakey Chapel that come like every other week, every two weeks. But I think we need to have um, one on campus that students can go to, to where if they feel sick, they can have one and have their results in a week or two days, right? Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, we've done a great job with like communication with students and faculty and staff, but we could even be, we could do better than that. Mm -hmm. So not sending ourselves short, I don't know. Cause I feel like we've done a lot. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. But I think just better communication trying to find ways that we have students listening or we have them hearing us, but they're not listening to us, right? Yeah. So how can we make them like want to put on the mask? How can we make them not want to go out to party? How can we make them not want to do this? And and don't get me wrong too, bro. Like I understand. Yeah. Like, you know, like we're both college students. Like bro, we want to have fun. Like, exactly, bro, yeah. So I know for me, I graduated in May. So it's just okay. like, how can we have this fun without breaking yeah, the rules, you exactly. know? I mean, like, I can't blame the students either for that, but it's like in the positions that we're in as student leaders, like, yeah. we have to be the ones to be like, listen, like, you gotta chill, chill. out, yeah. Um, I'm not intimately aware of like a day-to-day -day what, what students are being informed with. Yeah. I think the university has been great with keeping the, the COVID dashboard, all the numbers and the reporting, and and all this kind of stuff. I've had it, and they have a, they very clearly explained to us, like if you have a student who tests positive or think that they have symptoms. So I've had maybe, I think maybe total about a half a dozen students yeah. who either tested positive or who thought they might be. And so, you know, I was able to provide them with kind of like a sort of a boilerplate kind of instruction. So yeah. I, I wasn't having to give them, you make it up. Like everyone's getting the same information to the same places. And um, I think the only thing that I could think of, but again, this might be happening. I just might not be aware of it is maybe um, some kind of like uh, educational, like uh, videos or something, not yeah. about like how to social distance, but like just kind of things about the virus or like, I don't you know, it might not be every week, but just things that people understand it that maybe can be used to convince people who think it's some kind of hoax that, you know, yeah, it's real. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, it's hard to, to prove to people who don't want to believe anything that something is not what they want to think it is. Right. But even for those who, who, who do recognize its reality, I think it'd be, it'd be, I'd be interested to learn a little bit more, although I know the science is so evolving about it, but yeah. So maybe just some educational things or some stuff from like this, the, um, the, the, you know, the college of science or whatever, uh, yeah. maybe just about how viruses work, how vaccines work. Cause there's so much disinformation out there. I agree. That yeah. it would be helpful to have something like current that we could sit, share. So I think we need to continue to be proud of ourselves for the work that was done, particularly in October. Oh yes, exactly. In October, when we were seeing fours and twos and ones, um, that's what we want it to be every, all the time. Yeah. 
and we didn't move out of phase one at that point, not because the coastal community wasn't doing what we were supposed to do, but we make that shift because Horry County as a whole was seeing an uptick in our numbers. Um, and so just because we couldn't move from phase one to phase two doesn't mean that we don't have something to be proud of. Right. Um, and we should be proud of those numbers, but we should remember what we were doing to get to those numbers, start doing that hasn't worked. Yeah. We saw what worked. We just need to go back to that. Good. That's a really good question because I've been thinking about that too, you know, just sort of as a administrator stepping back and saying, all right, what worked this semester and what didn't? I think all of us have had this mindset, oh, it's only a couple more months, it's only a couple more months. It's not going to be a couple more months, right? right. At this point, we probably need to plan at least till May, um, possibly longer, of uh, this is going to be how we operate. Um, so, you know, I think the only other thing I would love to see more from students is just more sort of shared ownership of um, getting that message out there and the peer-to-peer -peer accountability pieces. Um, reporting the information is huge, right? But I think even more sort of, um, I don't know what this would even look like, but peers sort of holding peers accountable, mm -hmm. whether it's student government sort of stepping up and saying, you know, any organization that's violating these standards won't be a recognized organization for two years, whatever it, you know, yeah. whatever it is. But I think the flip side of that, Earl, and I, <laughs> my colleagues were sick of hearing from this from me this summer, is that, you know, you can put penalties in place as a risk management tool, but penalties don't regulate the virus, right? right. You can regulate student behavior, um, but you can't, you can't stop the virus from spreading. Exactly. So yeah. that's the really hard part is that I think we we look at all of the sort of solutions, quote unquote, that we that we think that we have in terms of ramifications for students making decisions that are outside of expectations, um, and we apply them here. But I'm not sure that they're that sort of a square peg round hole scenario, right? I think what we really have to do is look at you know sort of public health campaigns in the past. Mm -hmm. We look at sort of how did we reduce smoking in general in the population? How mm -hmm. did we increase you know, condom usage in general in the population. Like those are the things we need to learn from um, and sort of look at those strategies to say, um, this is a better way to sort of, to help people. Cause we don't want them just to blindly abide by our policies. We right. want them to take an active role in lessening this concern for themselves and their families and exactly. the campus as well. From this question, I really saw from the community that we saw what worked for our coastal community. We saw what kept our numbers low. So in the future, we just need to keep on doing these things and not regress back into what was before COVID because it's during COVID. And so we have to do what we have to do. And so by still continuing with these procedures and everything like that, we can continue to lower our numbers until, you know, a vaccine or whatever comes out and COVID goes away or, you know, lessens or, you know, whatever the future has planned. But for now, we still have to just keep doing what we were doing, wearing masks, hand sanitizers, limiting where we go, limiting who we see. And that's what I got from the community. I do. So just make sure that you check in on friends and family and join as many clubs as possible. It's all online, but it's still an experience that you can have and just focus on your studies and do what you can to keep yourself mentally and physically healthy. Yeah, so I mean, this kind of reminds me of my freshman year where I wasn't involved and kind of stayed in my room, which I know it's not the same situation for the freshmen coming in, but just do your best to find things to be involved in, even if it's virtually. There's still organizations putting on events, there's still things going on, and you don't have to put yourself at risk to participate in those things. So right. try and be involved, just not in person. Right. I think I think the student voice um, is so important. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that we could have researchers, doctors, we could have faculty, staff, administration, we could have the president come and say, listen, y'all need to stop doing that. Yeah. And they won't listen. Exactly. I think for my time here, being here at Coastal, students really don't know the power of their voice. Yeah. And and in some cases, they don't even know how to use it, right? Because mm -hmm. for a lot of students, it's like, why would I speak up? Why would I say this? Nobody's gonna hear me anyways. Right. Um, and I would challenge that person to say, what you're saying is not true, mm -hmm. right? So like I was just saying back before, like the student body right now is in a position to change coastal so much and yeah. not just right now this year, but like even after I leave, 
Like I'm trying to make things so like even after I go that these things are still in place. Yeah. Um, but I mean like going back to COVID, like, yes, like be that leader, be the one to say like, let's go do this, but make sure you have your mask on. Yeah. Or like, we can do this, but make sure you're six feet apart. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my advice. Like be a leader, stand up, you know? Yeah. Don't be like a boss, right? Be a leader. Yeah, Don't leader. be like, yeah, y'all got to do this. Be the yeah. one. I understand we're trying to do this. We can <laughs> definitely do this. Yeah. But what are some ways that we could do this so other people won't get infected and we can be thoughtful and acknowledge that other people are around us as well? Um, I think the best way to still have a positive experience is to just sort of accept it for what it is. I mean, mm-hmm. I think that's the first thing is to not not get stuck on what it should have been kind of a thing and just roll with it as it is and make the most of it like um you know like for those those that are doing their classes online or participating participate right engage i mean i I always appreciate you you're you're always a (laughs) go-to like like when the class gets crickets i'm like i know earl's gonna say something i know he's gonna come in and say i just don't like silence so yeah (laughs) no i mean i don't mind a little silence because sometimes people need to think but but when it's like and I'm like, is, are you guys awake? You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it is hard because I know. I, I mean, even for me, I mean, I'll admit, like some of the faculty meetings I had when I was in Dubai, like, you know, I would kind of zone out too. I would just turn it on, and like, <laughs> 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 that's just because they were really boring meetings. But anyway. Yeah. Um, I think just accept it for what it is, but try to make the most of it while you can. I mean. Um, I know everyone's kind of zoomed out, but honestly, there's like, you know, in some ways it's easier. Like, I mean, I I, I, talking to some students, in some ways you can still do things like maybe not involving other people, but like getting out, like, like I've been going for walks with my fiance or just yeah. trying to do things that don't require you to be around a ton of other people, mm-hmm. but at least get you out of the cocoon, so to speak. Right. right. I think that's important. I think you do need to get out of the, get out a little bit, but not into a, a situation that's to compromise you right yeah I, so I think you know accepting it i think managing as best you can making the most of it um and just finding you know finding ways to like connect with people i think i was i don't remember where it was but um like in my phd program we have a cohort so we we just have some like kind of every other week or we have occasional just sort of how you're doing kind of a meetings and, yeah and just sort of check-ins and they don't have to have any purpose it, even if it's just a like a five minute thing or even if it's just an sms just messaging people you know like hey how's it going and like sometimes people just want to chat with somebody i, I think yeah. it's the biggest thing we miss if we really are physically isolated is feeling detached from people we know so take advantage of the opportunities that are being presented right so we've got um through cab through the office of student life housing's doing some great programming there's things to do right. that would have happened COVID or not. Mm-hmm. And so um, take advantage of those opportunities. Even if you never wanted to learn how to cook chicken <laughs> or sauce, yeah. like just go to the event. Like right. you know what you're gonna learn. I feel like I've cooked quite a bit in my life and I went, he was talking about cutting butter and putting it in the fridge and, it, <laughs> and I was like, that's genius. Why yeah. have you thought of that, right? <laughs> you can make the most of your college experience if you just put yourself out there and engage in the ways that are being provided to you, even if it's not the ideal experience or what you had imagined when you applied to the universe. I think what's gonna be different about folks who have lived through college in this era is you're gonna you're forced to ask yourself some really difficult questions. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is that when I think about sort of how I in college, how I create a sense of self, it was really based on what like others acceptance of me, right? And so for others to accept you, you have to be in public spaces, right? right. You have to sort of, um, and so it's gonna force you to sort of challenge that notion, right? And say, you know, I hope that it, it helps folks develop sort of deeper, meaningful relationships with a couple people mm-hmm. uh, instead of this sort of large pool of people that I only quasi know, right? right. Um, and that's a, that's pretty common in the college experience. Yeah. Is that, you know, I, I have this group of folks. Um, I have any clue what their family is like or anything about them, mm-hmm. but they're into classes, and so we're kind of cool. Exactly. Um, but but yeah, that's going to be hard. Um, I won't lie, that's going to be hard. But but I also think. Um, you know, it, it, it's to let go of expectations, I think is gonna be huge. Um, you know, I think even if we do, um, 
if we're able to have a graduation ceremony in person in the spring, mm -hmm. it's not going to look like previous graduation ceremonies. Right. Like that we know, right? So, so what is it going to look like? Um, and, and that flexibility is going to be just huge. Um, but I, I also think to to recognize sort of caring for one another is going to be really important too. Mm -hmm. And getting through this uh, and getting through the spring semester as well, folks are going to have to recognize what they're going through as well. Right. Exactly. And so I think a lot of students and a lot of people are just, they're, they're agitated and frustrated. And, mm -hmm. and we sense that a lot at the beginning of the semester, parents would call and just sort of unload about the smallest thing that they were frustrated right. by. And we're like, this uh, is yeah. not about this. Clearly this is about something else. Right. Um, but yeah, I think that's important. And I think, you know, the other thing that I, um, <laughs> the, the biggest thing that I've said, in a couple of my different emails is just this notion of if you don't think that you can alter your expectations for college this year, do it all online because you can, right? So if, if, if you need to be partying, <laughs> go somewhere else <laughs> and take your semester there. Exactly. Um, and nothing stops you, right? You have this unique opportunity you never had before. Um, but you know, I, I will say one other interesting thing is I've just sort of been really surprised, not surprised, but, um, we had so many students want, still want to be here, even though they knew they're gonna have the majority of their classes online right. from the residence hall, right? And so I think that speaks volumes about what it is about this college experience that, that people value, right? It is right. the, um, but it's also the very thing that we have to try and restrict right now. Exactly. Right? So, uh, so it is about sort of creating these small, small circles, small communities of folks that you can interact with and trust. Um, but yeah, it'll be challenging. I'll be honest. It'll be challenging. Right. Uh, the classroom experience is challenging. Um, but I do think the other thing that, that I've hoped, I don't know what, what your experience has been like, that'd be interesting to hear too, but it seems to me like our, our professors are much more prepared for this online experience this fall than they were in the spring because oh, they yeah. had the summer to sort of make it more interactive, make it more realistic. Um, so yeah, yeah, I don't, I, I think that there's patience. If I had to narrow down a piece of my patience, lessen your expectations, um, and just in general, because that way some of these things might be pleasantly surprising. You know, I think we, we, I, we keep getting questions. When do student organizations get to meet in person? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> that might happen if we get to phase two. Right. But the truth of the matter is, we got very few spaces for all these organizations to meet because the caps on the classrooms are so much smaller. Exactly. So it's never going to look the same. It's not like you're going to be able to have weekly meetings in X room on campus. You might be able to have a monthly meeting in person right. in one very large space. Um, so, so yeah, I think that's the, the key piece. I think folks are just waiting for anything to feel normal. Right. Um, and so how do we do that? Um, but also I think, you know, I think we have a, a example of the, we took very little risks, I would say this fall. Yeah. And, and we did pretty good with numbers. So where can we take a little bit more risk in the spring mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, you know, I, a lot of campuses are putting up tents and doing outside things. And right. you know, how can we look to, to those ideas and examples as well? From this last question with the community members, I really got the sense that in order to have a successful and somewhat fun even, uh, college career uh, you know during COVID times we all really need to stick together and this does obviously does not have to be in person but it can be you know checking up on somebody calling somebody you haven't talked to in a little while just to make sure they're okay through this pandemic and I feel like we don't do that as much as we should like, even before COVID we weren't checking up on people but now since we're locked in the house and we're locked in you know stationary places we're not going anywhere, so we not have we don't have much to do. We're not seeing the people we, we love and we care for as much as we were seeing before. So I interpret the community saying is that we all need to stick together through this because this, these are very hard times for everybody. Everybody's going through different struggles. Everybody's going through different hardships. So we, if we stick together, we can get through this and we will get through this no matter how long it takes. Now that we have heard all the community members' answers to the questions, let's look and analyze each member. My interview with Sarah Beth went very well. Her main focus for stopping the spread of COVID at Coastal was just people being accountable for wearing their masks and ex when especially come to the case of students and not going to these clubs and not going to these events where they know it's gonna be a lot of people without masks and a high potential for them to get COVID. When the students came back to Coastal, her main worry was for that the students would follow these guidelines put on by the CDC 
our administrators and everybody like above charge and that everybody would wear their mask and kind of help one another be safe and healthy in these times because we have to be accountable for our own selves in times like these because we can't really control what other people do so if we control ourselves and we kind of set that example uh, going back to what Dharma said be a leader not a boss with Maggie being the president of CAB, she sees a lot of the inner works that goes on to helping protect students uh, with on-campus activities. So when she has to plan an event, she has to take into account, um, you know, how many students can we have? Is this CDC guidelines? You know, and everything like that. Maggie really pushed at the end of her interview that there are still things going on on campus, uh, you know, like like the Coastal Activities Board. And so there's still these clubs, even though they're virtual, you can still get involved. You can still meet new people. It's just going to look a little different than it has in the past. My interview with Darwin was very successful. Him being the student body president, he was in most of the meetings creating these new mandates uh, set in place because of COVID. And him still being a student, he still sees that some people still aren't following the rules and some people are. And so what I really took from this interview, I love this quote that he said, he said, be a leader, not a boss. And basically what he was saying there is show people the right way to do it. Don't just tell them, like make them want to motivate themselves into doing like into wearing their masks, for example, instead of just like yelling at them to wear their masks, because that would be more receptive and, you know, more likely to do it. And so I really appreciated that. And I like that line. So that's one, that's one of the key things I took from this interview. Professor Gilbert had the unique opportunity of teaching overseas in Dubai for about six years. As he said in his interview, he is no stranger to the virtual classes, so this wasn't as big of a change as it could have been, uh, such as for other teachers who had never done virtual classes before. He was very excited when coming back to teach at Coastal and was kind of disheartened about not being able to form that connection and bond with the students, as many teachers are not able to. Uh, because Zoom is not in person and you don't get to form that in-person connection. Dr. Marshman is over most student activities, so she really gets to see, um, you know, how these students are doing with the with the virus procedures, how they're being affected by it. So I thought she would be an absolute great asset to this project. She gave me many details and many examples of just things that are going on on campus that some students don't even see, like all the meetings that they have to go through about procedures that are still ongoing. When I asked her about the advice to give to the CCU community, she said, you know, just still get involved around the same thing Maggie was saying. It just there's still opportunities, many opportunities to get involved with the club, organizations, uh, fraternities, sororities, you know, all that. It's just going to look a little different while we have COVID around or while we have COVID in a high presence because that's what we have to do to stay safe. And we have to do it, so we might as well just get used to it for now until we can get over this and overcome this. But there's still many opportunities on campus. You can still join clubs. It'll just look a little different than it has in the past. But that's okay because we embrace change. Dr. Packett was my first interview, and him being the Dean of Students and the Interim Vice President, this was a really big deal. I I went I went in a little nervous, but after he started talking, he made me very comfortable, and we you know we got to talking, and it was more like a conversation rather than an interview. He gave me so many insightful details, just about like the type of meetings that are going on, the type of precautions that the staff and even some of the students are doing to ensure our safety and ensure that we kind of help stop the spread of COVID. Even if we can't control like our outside outside variables, like the clubs and stuff like outside of campus, we can't control somewhat what goes on on campus. And so he was just telling me that they do, like their staff is doing everything in their power just to kind of make procedures and all this to help us as a students stay safe and stay informed about what's going on in the world with COVID. And so I got just like a great perception of how Coastal is do dealing with COVID from an administrative standpoint. Overall, these interviews went amazing and I'm glad I got to talk to these people, these student leaders, these uh, campus leaders, uh, whether that be students in the LIFE program, students in uh, a CAB president, students in the student body president, teachers coming back from Dubai, uh, the head of student life and all student activities, or the dean of students, it doesn't matter. We all have different perspectives on how Coastal has dealt with COVID. Now, some of the things were similar and some of the things were different, but the overall synopsis was that Coastal was handling it very well, and we just need to keep being responsible for our own safety and in turn, help other people out with their safety because we can really only control ourselves. So let's take that initiative 
and you know wear our masks not go out to these clubs every single week and you know just do what we can to help stop the spread because if we don't do it who will in these crazy times it's really great to see a campus have these type of leaders that are willing to put themselves on the line and you know work a little extra harder just to make sure they're motivating others to you know want to do the same and want to be these leaders on campus at the end of the day we're all a part of the coast community and so it's our responsibility to keep our campus safe healthy and in the future covid free well that will conclude the documentary thank you so much for watching a huge shout out to all the community members that helped me out with this project i know times are hard but we have to keep our heads up and look forward to brighter days my name is earl foxworth and this has been coastal versus covid